Hi, everybody. Welcome to Two Boys, One Podcast. Can you hear me in the back? Sir? Madame? I, th- I think I saw a hand go up there. All right, good. Good, good, good. Well, hello. I appreciate the effort. Thanks for coming. Well, my name's Rob. Oh, thanks for having me. Oh. And I'm, I'm your guest host permanently. Zeke. We're friends. True or false? We'll see. True or, true or false? True or false words have never been spoken. Hmm. That's not really an answer. I'm not good at that. <laughs> that is okay. Well, Zeke, uh, here we are, episode four. Per- is it really that many? I believe so. Uh, I still feel young. <laughs> I do too. In my heart. Well, well, wait. well, as you can tell from the sound of it, we're still getting our legs underneath us because at the end of last week's episode, we forgot to talk about what movie we were going to be reviewing this week. As, as I was saying uh, numerous times last week, we are very proficient at what we do, uh, as uh, displayed by us forgetting to tell you what movie we were going to talk about this week, uh, which is... We had one thing to do. And we blew it. One thing. We blew it. No surprise. We did. Story of my life. Eh, worst things have happened. Anyways, what was the movie, Zeke? I, I forgot. The Attack of the 50-Foot Cheerleader, circa 2012. Mm, that's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. And did you watch it? I did. I did my homework this week. Did you? I did indeed. Well, we covered that. <laughs> Next segment. <laughs> and moving on. Well, I don't know how many of you have actually uh, watched this film, and it's not something that really would come across either of our radars, typically. Uh, but there was a, a a fella who we went to high school with who had a, a small cameo in the film by the name of Eric Kovac. And I did track him down. He's 14 minutes in. He has a keg on his back walking around the toga party. Oh, no kidding. I do remember that, that, that scene. Yeah. Huh. How about that? Well, there you go. Small world. It took me two times to track him down, but uh, we did it. Yay, we did a thing. And uh, what what uh, what was your synopsis and critique of said film, Sir Rob? Okay, uh, synopsis. A nerdy scientist wants to be a cheerleader because her mom says she has to be a cheerleader. Only cool people are. Only co- right. And she's also trying to join a sorority. Uh, like only cool people like only, do. <coughs> geez, excuse me. Like only cool people do. Um, but luckily, since she works in a science lab, she's got uh, access to some goo, some pink some pink goo, and uh, it makes, her, makes things bigger and stronger and I, I think... Th- more prettier. More prettier. Um yeah. Anyway, she shoots herself with the pink goo, and uh, she she grows to be. I mean, was that fifty feet? I think it might have been taller. Well, it's it's difficult because uh, I'm not exactly sure who the fifty foot cheerleader was in the story. Because uh, uh, there there is a big battle, cheer royale at the end, a melee, if you will, of perky people, and uh, one is taller than the other. And considerably, I guess uh, one of them must have been fifty feet tall, so to speak. It's one of those films where critiquing it really doesn't do you any good. It's it, it, it does not lend it well, lend itself well to um, film theory or uh, really any any rationalization whatsoever. Yeah, it was it was. But you know, with a t- with a title like. Uh, attack of the fifty foot cheerleader. You should know what you're getting into. Before I would. You hit play. I would agree with that. Uh, the movie itself, pretty bad. I did laugh a couple of times. Uh, yeah. It was. I mean, I can't say it was a waste of time. It was. It was a inter- entertaining. It had its moments. I guess. If I mean, again, I knew exactly what I was expecting, um, and was accurate in my assessment <laughs> previous to watching the film. Uh, but it was. It was. You know. Uh, the secret of the pink ooze was, I guess, uh, well well defined. Yeah, uh, well defined. You're well defined. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say. Uh, not not without the pink ooze. 
Get some of that pink goose. Get me some of that. I want some. Yeah, I would say it's exactly what you're expecting it to be, everyone. Uh, just there were, I mean, there were some fun cameos in it. Uh, it wasn't really based on any previous work, uh, so to speak. There, I mean, there's a ta- the attack of the fifty foot woman from the fifties, but Roger Corman has a cameo. Yeah. Um, I think Land John Landis has a cameo. Did he? Um, hmm. I think he was the professor. The one that gets his eye. Uh, yeah. Oh, no kidding. That, uh, that takes a button button to the eye. I believe that was him. Anyway, it could have been that. Um, I'm not sure. It was, it, like I said, it wasn't a waste of time. It was just one of those fun films to watch on the road, I guess. And I'm glad that Eric had a uh, role as descriptive as beer guy. <laughs> you think it'd be keg guy? You'd think so. I mean, it, at least it would have narrowed it down. Uh, when the first, I made it through the first time without noticing him. Mm-hmm. And uh, and this is n- no criticism of his work <laughs> specifically, but I, I figured that after watching the film, I had narrowed his in- involvement to three acts, uh, and I had no idea which one. <laughs> Was it what did it end up being? One of the. Uh, so they really hit the ground running uh, when I did track him down. the The toga party is at minute fourteen, mm-hmm. so uh, in in the course of the film leading up to that. She goes from dorky freshman right. pledge uh, with acne to buxom, uh, perfect toga party attendee. Yeah, they hit, they hit act two pretty quick, didn't they? They really just rolled right in, yeah. <laughs> some would say. Uh, it some... was distributed by Epix, so that should give you an idea of yeah. the, the subject matter. I was, I'm not familiar with that distribution company. I think it's it's more of a, a, I think it fed fed into straight to Netflix uh, type sure. of distribution or or uh, Amazon. I'm not sure who got it first, but I think you can find it on both now for a limited time. I see. Well, I've got some thoughts about it, and you're going to have to hear them. Okay. I will. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm just going to have to sit here and pretend I'm tied yeah. up, like a captive captive yeah, audience. Yeah. Ooh, tied up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, okay, here it goes. 50-foot cheerleader, attack of, of the 50-foot cheerleader. I thought she'd be, like, rampaging through town and destroying buildings and stuff, but there wasn't any of that. What's the deal, huh? So, if you look at the poster for attack of the yeah, 50-foot cheerleader, she is on, on, the, on, the game, on, the, on the football field with, like, a quarterback throwing a football between her legs, uh, and she looks a little, you know, angry. Uh, and in, in the attack of the 50 foot woman from 60 plus years ago, she's holding cars. And that's kind of what I was expecting. Yeah. I was expecting that aliens versus monster, uh, huge giant where she's just rampaging through town. Uh, that didn't happen. And it was more so like green screen peeking around buildings um, and looking for her top, which she, she frequently misplaced. Um, but she was able to to avoid a xiphoid process killer blow by catching the hand between her breasts, which I thought was an interesting uh, kung fu move. I, I mean, whatever so it works. Evidently, it worked really well. I won't tell you who wins, but I will say that that blow was not the defining moment of the film. Certainly not. You know what was the defining moment? I do not. Boobies. I would say that that was a a whole uh, combined character uh, that was uncredited within the film. Yeah, I'm convinced you wanted me to watch this just because you know I don't watch movies with that sort of filth in it. Well, I tricked you into it, just like you tricked me into yeah. a previous film. Yeah. Oh, I guess it was boobs in that too, wasn't there? Briefly. Briefly. I closed my eyes. I I just it's you know I'm a, I'm a good I'm a good uh, little when boy. I watched it. When I watched it, I thought that I held up my hand ceremoniously to cover your eyes as if you were watching Thank it there with you. me. Thank you very much. But I, I, I covered your eyes with both hands, and then I just had to, to keep mine open to make sure the scene was over. <laughs> you had to be good and sure that, that it was over. You didn't want to miss, miss a thing, I'm sure. I didn't want to lead you astray. I mean, that would be unfriendlike of me. You're such a good friend. Okay. Yeah, I know. Hey, hey, did you know 
that uh, have you seen Ace Ventura Pet Detective? That's a movie. Have you seen it? I have seen that. Lois Einhorn, that was the cheerleader's mom. Did you know that? Sean Young. Oh. Finkel and Einhorn. Finkel I did Einhorn. not know that. Finkel and Einhorn. Finkel and Einhorn. Finkel and Einhorn. Yep. And then guess what else? Guess what else? It guess. Guess it. What else? Oh, I said you had to guess it. Um, does it have to do with Ace Ventura? No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. So, okay. Uh, I, w- I will guess that they're making a sequel to the 50-foot cheerleader calling it the 50-foot cheerleader secret of the pink ooze. I th- you might be right. I don't know. I have to look up and... Do you, is it... I, their IMDb page is going to be peaking <laughs> just just from us who have <laughs> seen it sure. recently. <laughs> Let alone all the listeners out there who are accommodating our discussion by clicking on their IMDb page. <laughs> what I thought was pretty funny is I to see the movies that we watch, I, I get them off of iTunes. And uh, mm-hmm. normally, so the pl- past two weeks, it was uh, partisan, and then uh, lost in translation. Each granted me a twenty-four hour viewing time. Guess how long mm-hmm. <laughs> Attack of the Fifty Foot Cheerleader? Guess how long I can? Thirty thirty hours. Thirty days. <laughs> 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 I got a kick out of that. Well, they want to make sure you have the <laughs> right. opportunity to see it. <laughs> Share it with your friends. <laughs> <laughs> Please show someone else that we made this film. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I got a kick out of that. Okay, that's it. That's incredible. Yeah, it is. I I just is. I will I will also add to that an addendum exhibit C that these films that we're screening or, you know, in some in some cases more than others where I don't do, get my work done, uh they're ruining my my rec- recommended viewing <laughs> habits on my on my my streaming sites. <laughs> yep, that's you know I used to do that to our friend Nick. I, I'd get on his Netflix and then I used to be able to rate all the titles. So I I, I was yep. just going to like ninja movies. I was doing like three ninjas and surf ninjas and just like any ninja movie I could have just to screw up his surf ninjas all day. <laughs> and the next day he woke up and he said, "What the hell's going on with my?" <laughs> and I had a laugh. Well, he, I mean, for, for, for again, we're talking about friends of ours that none of yep. you know. Uh, he, is, he, he really has cultivated a, a intriguing um, film title collection yes. and typically sees films that I have never heard of that are copied by Americans 10 years later. So he's, he's done a great job, uh, only to be thwarted at every turn <laughs> by people like us. We're just the best of friends. <laughs> we really care. We're helpful people. We're the we're the type of people that America was built on <laughs> the backs of. God, God, uh, help America. Amen. I do. I do think that if he were still alive, Ben Franklin would be a part of our podcast. Yeah, you might be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I take it back. Obviously. Obviously. Okay. The one thing uh, we can get off fifty foot cheerleader in just a second. I just have to say. Can we? Because the quarterback had a hard time doing that. Oh, guys, there was another cheerleader that also got big. We briefly mentioned it, but it was the sorority, kind of her uh, rival. And then she totally had coitus with a a fella, normal-sized fella, and he, he, I don't know. It did not go well for him. Anyways, Uh, you've seen Spider-Man, haven't you? The original? When you say original, yeah, I know, isn't I'm, weird I'm saying assuming the, the first, you know, yeah. the Sam, yeah, the Sa- Sam Raimi directed, yeah, right, Tobey Maguire. So that's what I'm yes, trying to I get to. Sam Raimi's brother, Ted Raimi, is um, not he's not Kyle like the main cheerleader's love interest in the end. He's like the the scientist in between the bad scientist at the end that's got the taser bazooka. There's a taser bazooka, guys. Mm-hmm. Also, which is pretty cool. Yeah, he was kind of. It's even cooler if you have it hanging above your mantle, which is even cooler if you actually have a mantle. Who who's got mantles these days? I ain't got no mantle. I ain't got no mantle. Really but anyways, yeah, uh, Sam Raimi's brother Ted, he's in it. Neat, huh? He's in Spider-Man One. No, he's in Tech the Fifty Foot Cheerleader. That's what I'm trying to. Maybe I didn't. 
Oh, I see what you're saying. It was like a segue within a segue. You just broke the 16th I'm, wall. And I'm riding on a segue this whole time. I'm just... <laughs> this whole time? Yep. You're getting great audio quality. <laughs> I, I mean, like I said, I'm a pro. I know what I'm doing. See, this whole time I thought you were going to tell me that I was watching a Sam Raimi film next week. And no, you were trying to actually tell me that... Uh, a Raimi was in the attack of the 50 foot tree. I believe I was doing a poor and job of trying to get there, but yes, that was what I was trying I was, to tell you. I was, I was getting drugged behind your segue. Like, I just wasn't keeping up. I, I, I souped up that segue. <laughs> Which one am I talking about? I don't even know myself. I don't even know. I don't even know. Okay. So, hey, we didn't do the song. Zeke Week. Zeke Week. Beep, beep, papa, Zeke Week. Okay. Zeke! Jesus. <laughs> that was frightening. Well, I mean, it was incoming. I feel like we, we laid the groundwork. We had, you know, Japanese zero planes coming at us, and the only appropriate response is to shout Zeke. You're right. You nailed it, sir. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nail edit. Brought to you by Nail Edit. <laughs> is that a, Nail Edit. Man, I'm not even going to go there. Anyways, so that's that's 50-foot cheerleader attack of uh, what movie? I guess it's my turn to pick for next week. Is it not? It is your turn because we we did an off-the-menu pick last week where I chose the film. And, yes, I did I did choose 50-foot cheerleader. I was quite surprised so. by your choice, if I'm being completely <laughs> honest. I can't imagine why. <laughs> it's very atypical. Uh, Zeke viewing. Certainly. I got, I'll have to... Well, I, I feel like I, I really botched this from the get-go by not re-watching a film that I recommended <laughs> on the first episode. And then... Second episode. It's just been downhill. It's been a downward spiral in the Zeke You've been good, a good boy. You watched a movie that you committed yourself to not watching ever. You did that one week, yeah, and you, then you watched... You tricked me. <laughs> I chose sides. He did. You picked your side. <laughs> the lines in the sand were drawn. I mean... And now I know where I stand. Look, I just... You guys are friends. I just want you guys to get along and watch good cinema. Come on! Well, now... Now, my, my quest is to ruin your social stream feed recommendation. <laughs> good luck getting in there, buddy. I'm not giving you my <laughs> password. It told me not to give it out, that stuff out to people. Because it's not safe. I, I'm just... First, I'm going to get your pin... And then I'm going to get your cell phone number, because I don't have that. And then I'm going to get your your Netflix, iTunes, Amazon, uh, Ion, Hulu passwords. And I'm going to release them to the world. Yeah, well, my Ion password, I don't even remember what it is. <laughs> Joke's on me, then. Is it? I'm not so sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, I've actually, I'm going to let you choose between two movies. I know we spoke about a, just one, but I'm going to give you the option of that one. Evil Dead 2. Mm. And within that, there is a Ted Raimi, the person that I was flailingly trying to <laughs> tell you, Sam Raimi's brother that was in 50 Foot Cheerleader. He is also in Evil Dead 2, so it might be fun for you trying to track him down. Or... I was inspired by the pink goo to give you the choice of reanimator because there is green goo. The pink goo was inspiring. Yes, that uh, that pink goo got around. However, I think that we've stumbled upon a fun added element to our horrible movie reviews. Goo? Uh, and that is, no, I, well, we're going to go gooless. <laughs> I think it'd be cool uh, to... So our recommendations, while we, we each get to recommend a film, mm -hmm. uh, I think that we have to build upon the thread. So if Evil Dead 2 has the same oh, name as sure, sure. 50 Foot Cheerleader, so then the following week I will have to come up with a film that has to do with someone involved in Evil Dead 2. I like could be, this. Could I be like crew. this. Could, could be crew. Yeah. Okay. Could be crew. Could be actor. Could be... Uh, sequel or remake, I guess we could put into that category. How about this? I, I hmm. Maybe it can be dependent, but I think it should be somebody that um, 
is shown a character in the film. I think that might be hard for, okay. for Evil Dead 2. All right, so well, I can live with that, though. I mean, we can we can get out of that trap for sure. There's there's plenty of things going on in that film, I'm sure, that where we can we can take a tangent. <laughs> I, it might be unfair to you because there's literally probably <laughs> six on-screen characters. <laughs> well, still, I mean, the burden the burden falls to me. So, but we just uh, made this rule, think, so now all of a sudden I'm sticking it. I'm sticking it to you, and I don't want to stick it to well, you. Well, what else is new? <laughs> what else is new? You've been doing it the whole the whole uh, issue four. This is can't even imagine what life was like before that. Yeah, but you can't you can't even imagine what it's going to be like either. So just no, it's just it's just getting darker the the further we go. It is indeed. I tell you what, you can also jump to anything. Ah. Mm. Nope, got to be a character. Sorry. All right, you made you you made the uh, uh, amendment to the rule. I'm a, I'm alright with that. I accept the challenge. So, Evil Dead Two is what we're going to be reviewing next week, mm-hmm. and uh, I will have to come up with a way to get from that film to my next recommendation. I think you're gonna have to go, with Bruce Campbell. I don't. Well, that's that's why I'm confident that I'll be able to come up with something sure. because he's done. A whole bunch of things. Yeah, he really. He, uh, and he I'm knows. sure that I'm sure that I can come up with with something that maybe you haven't even seen. I, I would be surprised if you caught a Bruce Campbell movie that I had. Shut up, Rob. <laughs> I'm gonna try and do it. Okay, okay. Jeez, are you okay with? It's gonna happen. <coughs> Jeez, you're making me cough. Take it easy, bro. Are you sure you're you're good with that rule? Kind of shoots down to it. Yeah, no. I think I think it'll be fun. Okay. It gives us like a whole element of. Like, I mean, between the two of us, we've seen a whole bunch of films, yeah. and there really hasn't been an element of here's why we're reviewing this film this week. Yeah, uh, you're right. So it kind of makes it entertaining. On hey, no, I mean to, to the listener, we you've actually you've just sat through a business meeting. That's <laughs> what, what you've done on this on this podcast. Was it entertaining? But I think it'll be. Yeah, I think it. I think I think we've come up with a fun element, and and it'll be interesting to see because I don't have any idea what I'm going to be coming up with for for two weeks from now but i think it'll be a fun a fun game to play within the, the yeah, game absolutely if you will and furthermore i challenge you to find ted find ted in evil dead okay my my homework is evil dead 2 find ted, find ted in evil like dead. a waldo character mm-hmm. so first things first i'm gonna have to google this man or i'm gonna go back and rewatch the attack of the 50 he, 50 foot he was, he was a man, he was a pretty man character he was like the nice scientist like she had her coworker, and then there was the bad scientist, and then like the good scientist. He was the good one. Does that help you? Oh yeah. Okay, I I understand. Like what the you're one that was. Now. I thought I thought he was on the side of the f- football field, uh, like the guy who had who had slept with the roommate. I thought that's... No, who no, 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 no. Look up his name, and you'll recognize him right away. All right, I can I can jump on board. And from what you're saying, my my options of who he could possibly be within Evil Dead 2 are very limited. Yeah, so I feel confident that I will be able to track him down. I found Eric. Yeah, that's I, true. I can that find, is true. I can find Raimi. I just have to, we'll I just right. have to say it again. Find Ted and Evil Dead. I just, I like rhymes. <laughs> I'll do it. I accept the challenge. Good, sir. And if I, if I may segue without a, uh, a good one. Uh, you have a chapter to read for us this week before we wrap things up. Zeke, if you would have so, given me a second, I was going to say in 50 Foot Cheerleader, there was a pirate uh, character. He was really out of place. He was my favorite. He was my favorite character because I'm pretty sure at some point in that film, towards the middle, uh, there was a mascotricide, if you will. It looked like they were just killing each other yep. on the football field. I liked that. I think it was my favorite scene. There was a lot of funny stuff going on in the background. I will I will give that to the 50-foot cheerleader. Mm-hmm. Anyways, my segue was better, so deal with that. You were going from a pirate to a lost Boy Scout. Well, I mean, if you remember last last chapter, I mean, she killed a pirate, Tinkerbell did. Tinkerbell did a lot of things last <laughs> chapter. That okay. I'm not may sure. May or may not have gotten out of I'm hand. not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what her sleeping uh, routine is like, uh, but that that girl's got nightmares for sure. 
Yeah, she's got some issues. We'll, we'll say that. Uh, she's working them out in interesting ways. I can, I can assure you of that. She's just living life, being a, a, a fae. That's short, short yep. for fairy. Uh, uh, fun little anecdote. I, I finished this week's chapter, and I told Abby, and she goes, "Ugh, they're so dirty." <laughs> I feel like that exact response is how most things that we create <laughs> are first uh, digested yeah. by any person in the room. And they probably should be. I, I, I totally understand that Oh, I, I make no apologies. No. Yeah. Just, yeah. We've earned just it. Just like Tinkerbell, we're just doing what we do, being who we are, you know? No apologies. Yep. All right, without further ado, Chapter 3... Tink gets stung by a bee. I told you I liked rabbit. All right, here we go. So all that cock and pirate business was pretty intense. Like, really intense. Rufio, Rufio and Tink were having a bad day. They'd been forced to murder things. Can you imagine having to do that? I mean, I guess I can on account I wrote it, but still, fuck. Well, anyways, I guess Rufio and Tink were going home to Treefort Land or wherever. When all of a sudden, Tink got stung by a bee, right in her fairy tuchus. Damn thing got the stinger right through her dick suit. What rot rotten luck. And that's the end of chapter three, <laughs> Tink gets stung by a bee. I, that's like a teaser chapter. <laughs> it was fine. It, you know, it had a act one. Um, stuff happened. Inciting incident. And scene. <laughs> I, so I, I, I just... I may have run short on time this week. <laughs> I, I'm not saying I did. I'm just I, putting the possibility out there. The possibility does exist. I understand. Uh, out, of, out of sheer anatomical curiosity, um, what is the ratio of a Tinkerbell to a bee uh, it, it's in one Neverland? To one, one to one. Is it one yeah, to one? Yeah. So, I mean, she just literally took it in the keister. Yeah. Uh, all Boy, right. you're making me think. And she is, took it in the keister. You're making me yeah. think I missed some pretty important <laughs> content. That well, could I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know uh, if you missed anything since it literally was a chapter <laughs> heading into into chapter four. Uh, <laughs> well, I, 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 that's interesting. I, I, I get amused by doing. I I contemplating <laughs> having the uh, the heading being Tink gets stung by a bee and then simply putting. Tink got stung by a bee at the end, but. <laughs> so what, what's interesting is, I, from what I understand, the, the original Peter Pan was very dark, uh, but what you have done is given a childhood fairy tale post-traumatic Neverland disorder. Uh, I mean, there, there's no reason for them to come back to the real world. Um, and it, well, I guess I, I shouldn't say that. If they did come back to, to the real world, it would be a fairy tale compared <laughs> to the hell that they've been living in. Yeah, Neverland's not looking too good. <laughs> Never, Neverland's not looking great, especially if you're, you know, any anywhere, uh, any species or any any age under that of an adult. Yeah. Or adults. I mean, that pirate he he came to a pretty nasty end. That pirate did not, you know, that was not a happy ending for him. I, I mean, you killed Elia Martel, raped her. May, maybe. Maybe he was able to, you know. Say that again. Sorry. <laughs> maybe he was able to make it, uh, you know. And and, and and the pink goo in the fifty foot <laughs> cheerleader was was the pirate from last week. You know, Zeke, it might just happen. I, I <laughs> I'm not going to tell you that it may not go that way. So I know that it seems like we don't have a plan when we start these podcasts, but let me tell you, I, by the time you've listened to all of these and years down the road when you have still stuck through it it's all going to come together mm -hmm. there will mm -hmm. be an apparent plan mm -hmm. the stories that you think that you've known and loved for your entire mm -hmm. life will be ruined <laughs> but the truth behind them will be uh so uh, uh inspiring earth shattering yeah. Yeah. and and that you're you're, you're going to think that there's witchcraft involved and there might be there, there probably, there probably is, is some dark, dark magic, magic going on. Yeah, I mean, we're just 
This is the beginning of the arc, people. Just give it some time. You'll, you'll, you'll. We haven't even made it through the hook yet. <laughs> no, sir. We have not gotten to the hook. I mean, there are main characters that, that Rob hasn't introduced in his story. There are films that we haven't even said we're reviewing yet that are directly impacted by characters that haven't been introduced you're, yet. So just bear, bear with us a little bit. You're goddamn right. Bear with us. I am. Yep. Well, that's time. Well, that brings us right on the num- numbers to 30. Right on the nuts. 30 minutes. Must yeah. be your nuts. I don't I don't feel it on mine. No, I definitely feel it in mine. Oh, okay. <laughs> is is Abby clapping for us to be uh, done? You know, I, I'm sure she's shaking her head. But <laughs> yeah. Gritting her teeth in the other room. Just waiting for it all to be over. I, I'm sure she's happy that we do only do half-hour episodes. <laughs> I'm sure she's not the only one. <laughs> Hey, I like listening to us. That's probably not a, a good it's... good thing to say or <laughs> admit to, but I do laugh at it. No, I, I'm a fan of our own work. I truly am. Even though it doesn't amount to anything, now, it is a molehill I aspire to, to uh, summit. The pretension we have for ourselves is just... <laughs> uh, I can't even find the word. Perhaps it's because I've changed accents all of a sudden. Anyways... Uh, yeah, that's that's that. I guess I like to ruin the end. We had a good, <laughs> good. We had a good yeah, thing. Yeah, and then I just then fucking. We kept, then we kept talking. <laughs> Thus concludes this episode of Two Boys One Podcast. Thanks for listening, everyone. Zeke, I will see you next week. Okay, love you. Bye. Well, I love you. Bye. The portions of today's broadcast that you actually enjoyed are brought to you in whole by. Off your knees, son. M- m- me? Yes. It's just us here in this damp, dark alley. What seems to be the problem? I, uh, I was sent a care package and it, it never showed up. Today's your lucky day, son. I, um, I don't feel very lucky. Or that anything g- good is about to happen. Who are you again? I'm here to service you. What? That's right, son. Could you please stop calling me son? You can't muffle the truth. I'm here on behalf of the LPU. The what now? Lost package unit. I haven't called anyone yet, and I, I, I certainly didn't call you. And you'll never need to. That's love, if you ask me. I, I I don't think that we're talking about the same thing anymore. Sure we are. Cookies, nice white shirt, a note with sappy hearts on it. Hey, that's mine. That's what we're here for. We can sniff out your junk like nobody else. Thank you. M- I, I don't even mind that it's been opened. What did you say that your name was? I didn't. When you have a badge, you don't need a name. When you lose your junk, don't lose your shit. Call the Lost Package Unit and let them service you today.